in hadith is totally different in the Quran. Yes, it's obvious. The prophet from the Quran is different from the prophet in the hadith. They are not the same. The prophet of the Quran never, never married a sincere soul girl. The prophet of the Quran is not a pedophile. The prophet of the Quran did not marry nine wives. The prophet of the Quran does not sleep with nine women in one night. The prophet of the Quran never ever went to commit any zina. The prophet of the Quran never gave anybody hadith books to follow. Wallahi lazi. Like I said, ever since God guided me, no wise person on earth has ever insulted me. I repeat, ever since God guided me, no wise person on earth has ever, ever insulted me. Yeah, assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, pardon with me, pardon me, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, salam, sister Hawa Bashir. Salam, uh, Salam, uh, Sister Rashida Mohammed. Uh, salam, Alam Shah, Abdul Basiu, Mumu Ali, you salam. Yes, the correctional officer is here. Kwame Idi, Richie Kwame uh, Tando, Rafiu Ben uh, Shahid, Tahir, I see you with the Chinese name. <laughs> uh, Mufassir, uh, yes, Brother Mufassir, salam, I see you. Rock Silva. I see you all. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yes. So, as you all know, I was supposed to start about uh, 15 minutes earlier, but uh, sorry, due to some uh, things I need to get together and also my time with the family. So, here we go. So, I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and act righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the what? Submitters. That is the Muslims. This is my way. I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to Allah, for I am not among the idolaters. That is the Mushriks. O you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are truthful, that is, who are honest. So you have to be with those who are truthful, who are honest, who can tell you the truth at all costs. Be with those kind of people. Don't be with people who lie to you, assume, you know, use their opinions to tell you certain things which have to do with God. So try to stay from such people. So, you all know that's what I, what I try to do for the people. I give you exactly what the book says. If it doesn't say that, I don't give you. If it says it, I give it to you and give you the reference to go and search for yourselves. Yeah. Uh, please give me the signal. If everything is moving on uh, nicely, quite well, so that I can move on with the program, knowing that everything is okay. Other than that, I don't want to move ahead with a program whereby later on people will tell me. Uh, okay, so Rob Silver says, uh, some distortion, brother. Distortion. Let me let me check and see. Yeah. Uh, let me know if, in case my voice is moving on, sound and clear, no hitches, no anything there. Then it's good. Uh, the video, I'll I'll work on the stream and make sure later on it gets better by time. Yeah, uh huh. Because 
whilst I'm here doing my program, I think my 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 kids are also using the internet at the same time. So, uh, just in case of, uh huh. So if you can hear me sounding clearly, then I guess it's it's good to go. We can continue like this, inshallah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Abdul Samad, Adam Salam, uh, you're welcome. Yes, uh, Kwame Ed says everything is perfect. Yeah, which is good. Yes. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, I'll be coming to your questions to give you the answers soon. So bear with me, have patience to bear with me. I'll be coming to your questions. For now, let's let's deal with the yeah. For now, let's let's deal with the program for a bit before I move on to the question and answer. So bear with me, kindly bear with me. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> yeah okay so first of all i take you to quran chapter 10 verse 82 thank you very much um alasan abdul mumin thank you very much i appreciate your comment thank you yeah so everybody has the right to say what they feel they want to say let them say i'm a madman i'm okay with it let them say i'm a fool no problem let us say what they want <laughs> i'm better than them that's all i can say so let them say what they want okay let's move on so when i take you to quran chapter 10 verse 82 uh let me see if i can get to show uh the screen if I can get to show the screen somehow. Let me see. Uh, bear with me. I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if my, my internet will allow me to do the program the way I want. Right? So if it permits me, then that will be very nice. Right? So let's see. So Quran chapter 10, verse 82. It says, Wa yuhikka Allahu, wa yuhikka Allahu al-haq bi kalimatihi, wa la wukariha al-mujirmu. Wa yuhikka Allahu al-haq, haqqa bi kalimatihi, wa la wukariha al-mujirmu. Now, simply, what God is telling us in Quran chapter 10, verse 82 is, and God will enforce the truth with his words, even if the criminals dislike it or they distaste it, they, they, they hate it or whatever you can claim to be. And God will enforce the truth with his words, not my words, not Prophet Muhammad's words, not anybody's words, God will enforce the truth with his own words, even if the criminals, who are the criminals? They know themselves. Even if the criminals dislike it, they distaste it, they don't like it, they hate it, they averse it, then God says he will enforce the truth with his own words. And where can we find the words of God? In the book of God, right? So then God clearly told you in quran chapter 6 verse 115 quran chapter 6 uh bear with me let me see if i can also share uh the page of my quran so that people can actually uh see it clear enough so quran chapter 6 verse 115 that is suratul uh, an'am suratul an'am Chapter 6, verse 115. 
Uh, let's see if this will permit me to share the screen for you to see this, because uh, as time goes on, I just want the program to be that the people can see what I'm doing uh, in real time instead of always uh, me just seeing it and they didn't, they don't get to see uh, what I'm seeing, right? So I want to base it like that, whereby people can see what I'm seeing. Uh, let me try to zoom this for you. Yeah. Here's the verse. So God says in Quran chapter 6 verse 115, this is what it says here. It says, وَتَمَّتُ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ That is here. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدِكًا وَأَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ Then he says, وَهُوَ السَّمِيُونَ عَلِيمٌ You see it clearly here. So here, God says, and the word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. You see it. Thank you very much, uh, Gambo David. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> now we some fellow says, Ghana Messenger Baba Shwa. <laughs> Thank you. So God says here clearly in this verse, وَتَمَّتْ كَلْمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدِكًا وَأَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيُّ عَلِيمٌ He says the word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. There is no alteration to his words, right? وَهُوَ السَّمِيُّ عَلِيمٌ And he is the hearing and the omniscient. So, God has given us his word in the Quran, which is complete in truth and justice, and there is no alteration to his words. So first of all, I took you to chapter 10, verse 82, Surah to Yunus, where God says, And God will enforce the truth with his words, even if the criminals dislike it. Then again, I took you to chapter 6, verse 115, where God says, The word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice, and there is no alteration to his words, for he is the hearing, the omniscient. Uh, salam, uh, Liman, Imrana. Uh -huh. So, Chapter 6, verse 115. Apart from that, I'm taking you to chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, sorry, chapter 18, verse 109. Huh? Let me see if I can share also the screen for you on that. Chapter 10, verse 109. Chapter 10, verse 109. That's the verse. Chapter, sorry, chapter 18, verse 109. So it says, Kul is telling the messenger to say, Kul law kan al baharu midad an li kalimati rabbi la nafid al bar, kabla an tanfada kalimatu. Kalimatu Rabbi Walaujina bi mithlihi madada is asking the messenger to say kul kul law kan al bahar midadan li kalimati rabbi la nafid al bahar qabla an tanfada kalimatu rabbi walaujina bi mithlihi madada now the messenger has been asked to say he says say if there were the, the ocean you are seeing, the sea, the sea you can see with your eyes, the sea, S-E-A, the sea. If the sea, midada li kalimati rabbi, will be ink. When we say midada, it's like ink, to bring ink. Huh? For the words of my Lord, 
lanafidal baha then the what the sea will run out that means it will get finished before kabla an tanfada kalimatu rabbi before the words of my lord will run out walau jina bi mithlihi madada and even if we should bring an ink like it meaning like the sea right even if we should bring so the words of god is already complete in the quran you have it in the form of a book which has been written down in the form of a book so you find the words of god in the quran as verses right they are the verses of god and these verses we call them ayat in arabic ayat ayat that is the verses right so when they are definite they become al ayat al ayat you see those are the verses of god you don't find these verses in sahih bukhari jami al tamizi sahih muslim they are not the books of god the book of god is called al quran so to confirm that if you go to quran chapter 10 verse 37 God clearly says listen what he says in Quran chapter 10 verse 37 he says wa ma kana haza alquran an yuftara min dunillahi walakin tasdiq allazi bayna yadayhi wa tafsil alkitab la rayb fi min rabbil alamin so tafsil alkitab la rayb fi min rabbil alamin he says this is not the quran that could be invented or fabricated by other than god So God invented this book, right? Now, whatever other books you are seeing claiming that oh this is the book of God, that is the book of God, they are fabrications by people. For instance, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, they are all inventions and fabrications by the people. Right? So now God says, "Min dunillahi walakin tasdiq allazi bayna yadayhi." And this is a confirmation of what was before it. What was before it? Right? Good. Then he says, "Wa tafsil al-kitabi." That is when we say al-kitab here, which is ma'rifa, which is a definite article, it means the book that God has given to the prophets. according to quran chapter 6 verse 89 if you go it will tell you the list of the prophets and he gave them the book and the prophethood and the judgment right which you find the judgment in the book of god at the same time right so now the quran is the tafsil al kitab it does the tafsil of the al kitab so if you want to know anything about the al kitab the quran itself will do the tafsil you don't go to any shaykh or scholar or something to tell you lies no go to the quran it will give you the tafsil of al kitab then it says la raib fihi min rabbil alamin there is no doubt there in from the lord of the world so this is the book, what the book the quran is claiming to be so sit down investigate it with intellect you don't take the quran and just read passages and say oh this is what it says literally so that means this no please the quran quran chapter 38 verse 29 God clearly tells the prophet he says what he says kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatazakkara ulil albab he says it is a blessed book which we have revealed to you so that they may contemplate its verses the verses you find in the quran here it needs to be contemplated not just read it and think you understand it contemplate it right so that those of intelligence or those who possess intelligence will now what be mindful or take heed of it so even in a classroom when we all went for our academics even in the classroom when a teacher is teaching you <clears throat> something from a syllable right you can read from a book multiple times but you still not understand it because you need to reflect deeper or somebody to break it down for you just because we claim or oh, there's a claim that the book comes from god doesn't mean every dictum and hari we just take it read it and understand you understand <clears throat> now 
There is a saying, some people will say, oh, the Quran says we have made it easy to understand. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say God said. God never said he made the Quran easy to understand. The verse is chapter 54, verse 17. It's a misconception. People are misunderstanding that trait. And then some people will say, okay, how come God didn't make it easy for everybody to understand? There is a reason. Chapter 54, verse 17, he says, <clears throat> Chapter 54, verse 17, right? <clears throat> he says, we have suddenly made the Quran easy for the remembrance. You see, for the remembrance something which can help you to remember right this is why we have people who have memorized the quran because they can remember the verses in order to what recite or tell another person but it doesn't mean it is easy for understanding no when something is easy for understanding god will never tell you to contemplate it right if something is easy to understand, there's no need for contemplation. You just need to look at it and then understand. This is how it works, right? For instance, you see the curtain behind me here. This curtain is red, right? This is easy to, to see that it's red. You don't need to contemplate on this color. Unless if you are really, really, really ignorant, then you have to keep pondering deeper to see if it's red. Then that means you don't know a color. Do you get my point? Uh -huh. So what I want to help the people to understand is I, being somebody who has translated a fully translated Quran, I can give people the guideline so that they can understand what the, the, the rules on how to understand the Quran, the approach you take. So Quran chapter 41 verse 3. <clears throat> Quran chapter 41 verse 3. God says, Kitabun fusilat ayatuhu Quranan Arabian likomi yalamun. A book whose verses have been what? Detailed. Or what we can say elaborated. As an Arabic reading for people who know. For people who know here means people who are knowledgeable. If you are knowledgeable, you will know. Uh, Ramadan Abdul Fattah says, Brother Shrai, calling you but not picking up. I'm not picking up yet. Because I need to pass my message across first, right? So you wait. I'll, I'll give the chance for the call to come in. Then you can call again, right? Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, Kitabun Fusilat Ayatuhu Quranan Arabian Likaumi Yalamun. You all seen what the verse says, right? So now it says, a book whose verses have been what? Elaborated. As an Arabic reading for people who know. So meaning, when a person doesn't know, he can't understand it. That it has been elaborated. He can't understand the elaboration which has been done. Same way goes to a book of mathematics. Let's say, let's say this is a mathematics pamphlet, right? And you don't know about mathematics. There is no way you can see the elaboration of the mathematics equation in the mathematics pamphlet. You can't. Same way, you are not a science student. And there's a science book which has been elaborated for science students. If you don't have knowledge in science, there is no way you can understand, uh, you can understand that. Uh, You understand? There is no way you can understand that. Do you see it? Uh huh. So, just a second.
Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. so let's go on. So when we said uh, the Quran, when we're talking about the Quran being a book whereby you can just take and understand, doesn't mean you just, uh, uh, you don't have any guidelines to understanding a particular uh Yeah, it says I need more light, right? It, is it beam in here? Let me see if I can connect some light here. Yeah, thank you, Vora Vora. Uh, I fixed some light here. Let's see if that will help enough. Yes, anyways. Yeah, let's continue. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Abdul Jalil says, Baba, I, I think what you said, let me see. Uh, Abdul Jalil, yes, you're right. It will make the program slow. Pardon me because uh, I think this is the first time I'm I'm trying on uh, this program to see how it's it goes. So, uh, pardon me about that. Uh, Salam, uh, Marwan Devej, I see you. Salam. Yeah, I see you all. Okay, let's continue anyway. So, let's put the other notion aside. Now let's go with the notion of why I call Sunnis, Shias, Tijaniyas, Ahmadiyas, and all that whatsoever have you. Why do I call them Mushriks? Are they Mushriks or not? Is it an insult or not? No, it's not an insult. And I can justify that. Quran chapter 39 verse 64. The prophet, the messenger himself, was asked to call his people, the ones who worship idols, he called them ignorant people, jahilun. Quran chapter 39, verse 64. Right? Quran chapter 39, verse 64. He called his people, ayyuhal jahilun. Right? The Prophet called his people, Kul, Afa Gairullahi, Ta'muruni, Ahbuda, Abudu, Ayyuhal Jahilun. He called them ignorant people. Is it an insult? No, because they are ignorant. If they were not ignorant, he wouldn't say you are ignorant. And he even put a definite article on it to address them as ignorant people. You, the ignorant people. You understand? Uh -huh. uh Yeah, Vora Vora, no problem. I'll work on that next time so that it can appear clearer uh, than, than this. Oh, my God.
guys before i continue is there any echo because somebody just wrote to me that there's echo in my uh voice Maroon, Maroon says there's echo. Okay, let me let me continue. Okay, the people say no. So Maroon, it could be from your end. People say there's no echo here. I just tried my phone itself. There's no echo. So it could be your end, Maroon. Uh, so check check your side. Uh, Brother Mufasir, you can check your side. Okay. So people say, why do I call the Sunnis, the Shias, the Tijaniyas, Ahmadiyas, Mushriks? Why do I call them mushriks? The prophet himself, according to the Quran, uh, Quran chapter 39, verse 64, God instructed him to call his people, the ones who worship other than God, ayyuwal jahilun, ignorant people. Quran chapter 109, verse 1, Surah al Kafirun, the prophet and the messenger himself was asked to call people kul, ya ayyuwal kafirun, to call people disbelievers. Right? It's not an insult. It's a description of what a person's character entails. Quran chapter 41 verse 6. The prophet, the messenger, was asked to call the people who associate partners with God. Mushirikun. Is it an insult? No, it's not. Unless you are a fool to think if you are tagged about with what you are doing. That means you are a mushrik. Uh, that means you are, it's an insult. No, it's not an insult. So if somebody goes to steal money regularly and he's get, he get caught and you call him a thief, is it an insult? It's not an insult. It's a description of the person's character and personality. If you go to rape kids, you go to rape little kids, you are called a rapist. Is it an insult? No. You'll be a fool to think you are being insulted. It is the description of what you do. So, Mushrik who understands, I will never ever stop calling you a Mushrik till, till you have decided to follow the word of God alone. Because since you are associating the man-made garbages the scholars give you to the words of God, it means you are a Mushrik. You don't, what is wrong with your logic? You don't understand this simple A, B, C, D? <laughs> ah! So if you claim you are a Sunni, you are a Mushrik, God never gave you Ali Sunnah. He never gave you Sunni religion. You'll be a fool to think you are a Muslim. If you are a Shia, you are a Mushrik. God never gave you Shia religion. He never said you should go and follow Sayyidina Ali as your Imam or as your prophet. He never gave you all that. He says, Atiwu Allah wa Atiwu Rasul. Where did Sunnah become your Rasul? Where did uh, Shia became your Rasul? What is wrong with people's logic at all? If you are a Tijaniya, you are a Mushrik. Because anything you attach to the deen of God makes you a Mushrik. Simple ABCD. Why can't you phantom that? You call yourself Tarikatu, Tijaniya, the way of Tijani. Is that the way of God? Look at the way. The word Tarika means path, way. Tarikatu, Tijaniya, Ali, Sunnah. You are a Mushrik and you are crying over this like girls or babies. Ah! Oh my God. Quran chapter 12, verse 106. Let's see what God says. Are they Mushriks or not? They will claim, oh, we are believers. We believe in God. Why are you tagging as Mushriks? Yes, even people who believe in God can be Mushriks. You don't know? Huh? So let me simplify this. The answer is here. It's, it's so simple, but this, you know, naive people don't understand. Quran chapter 12, verse 106. Wa ma billahi illa wa hum mushrikun. You see the verse? Quran chapter 12, verse 106. 
wa ma yu'minu aktharuhum billahi illa wa hum mushrikun and most of them eh? most of them wa ma yu'minu aktharuhum and most of them who believe in god do not do so except whilst they are mushriks You do you see? <clears throat> Most of them, uh, uh, they do not believe in God. Most of them do not believe in God except while they are mushrikun. So if you claim you believe in Allah and you are associating Sahih Bukhari with him, you are a mushrik, whether you like it or not. Look, I will tell you today. I'll tell you tomorrow, I'll tell you face to face, I'll tell you online, I'll tell you in a debate, I'll tell you in a dialogue, unless you can prove to me from the Quran where that is an insult. I'm serious. So anybody, you tagging yourself Sunnah, Shia, Tijaniya, you are a mushrik. Wallahi. God never gave you sunnah. Where did he say follow sunnah in Nabi? I'm here giving you thousand euros to come and even face me and prove to me sunnah and Nabi. You are running like, like donkeys running away from the lion. I don't have horns. Look at a young man with a handsome face like this. You are scared of me. Huh? You are making me feel so powerful, untouchable already. Your scholars are even scared. Huh? Come, let them come and prove where God says you should follow Sunnah and Nabi, if not foolishly fooling yourselves. Quran chapter 2, verse 130. It says, Woman yargabu an millata Ibrahima illa man safiya nafsahu. And who would desire other than the creed of Ibrahim, if not one who fools himself? So if you claim you are a Muslim, and you tag yourself a Sunni Muslim, you are a mushrik, and you are a fool. I'm not saying it, God says it. Because which Akida are you following? You will say, I'm following the Akida of Ali Sunnah. Which Akida you are following? You say, Akida of Shia, Imam Malik, Imam Hanbali, Imam Shafi. You keep forming Akidas for yourself, and God says, Come and follow the Millata Ibrahima. Huh? Hey, brother Abdul Nasir, Paul Macri, I see you. Hey, brother, see you in Aganka. Salam. Hey, brother, see you in Aganka. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes, Abraham Bimushi, I see you. And out of their foolishness, the, the foolishness of the mainstream scholars, uh, the, uh, the Mushriks, the scholars of the mushriks they now think oh uh, baba shraib is is, is 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 forming an alliance uh with uh how do you call it common sense family and other people and they think i'm here to fight islam look at the foolish scholars you have i'm here to fight you mushriks out of islam you say i'm i'm fighting islam are you a fool that garbage islam you formed with pedophilia inside that garbage islam you have created for yourselves from the sahih bukhari you are calling that islam when god has given you real islam in the quran and you are fooling yourself with garbages god says do not cover the truth with falsehood you have used sahih bukhari to cover the quran to go to the extent to tell people that they cannot understand the Quran without that garbage books you have. So you do you blame somebody like Abraham if he takes your hadith and the, together with the Quran and tells you there's contradiction? Are you going to blame him? It is out of your foolishness you have taught him that Islam cannot stand without Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, and all the garbages. So of course he has the right to also join it and face you and show you your contradiction. It's simple as ABCD. 
if you stick to one thing, then you can explain to the person the understanding in a better way. Do you understand? Aha. Uh -huh. Because it's as simple as A, B, C, D. Let me tell you one thing. We have certain things whereby when a person believes, they cannot do anything but just to believe. Then we have certain things, if you believe, you must be able to prove it. I give an example. For instance, my great, great, great grandfather has existed, but I can't prove it. I believe my great, great grandfather has existed, but I can't prove it. How do I prove it? I can only say because he existed, that's why I'm here. Do you see this? Good. Then we have certain things that I need to prove it. Whilst I'm here, I need to prove it in a logical sense. So if you have something, you claim this book is explaining the Quran. And then somebody goes out there to pick up the same book and show you the contradictions. You have to prove the person wrong or right. You don't have to say, oh, uh, you know, I have to just believe in it. No, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And if it is a lie, it is a lie. The person has that capability or audacity to tell you. You understand? If I'm here telling you the truth and you think I'm insulting you, then you are a fool to think I'm insulting. Who is a fool? A person who likes good judgment. And Abraham, on the other hand, is telling you to use your common sense. It's simple as ABC. As a human being, you need your common sense to work for you. How is, how is this a big deal for people to reason? Right? Quran chapter 8. Quran chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 6. Quran chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 6. Right? Let, let me write it down and highlight it for people here. <clears throat> Quran chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 6. This verse I just put on the screen here. Quran chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 6. The prophet has his time, the prophet at his time, after God has shown him a vision and he came out to tell the believers the truth. Believers, believers, some of the believers even were averse against the truth he brought. The believers with him, some of them, they were averse with what the prophet said, even though it is the truth. Right? They were averse. So it is not every time even a person will speak the truth that people will like it. But when you are speaking the truth, don't care about who likes it and who don't like it. Say it and go your way. The ones who want to use their faculties, uh, uh, their, their, their sense of uh, reasoning, will use it wisely and benefit from it. Do you see how it works? Now, for some people, people, some there are some certain things people don't know, especially concerning the Quran. The Quran, chapter 39, verse 55. One of the things the Quran exhorts us to do is to follow the best of what our Lord has revealed to us. He says, ahsana ma unzila min rabbikum, min azab baktatan wa antum la tashurun. Quran chapter 39, verse 55. Let me see if I can share the screen. But unfortunately, it is uh, in... Uh, Quran chapter 39, verse 55. Yes, Quran chapter 39, verse 55. And God says, and follow the best of what your Lord has revealed to you before the punishment comes to you 
Bactetan, that is in a hibernation unexpectedly. Then he says, Wa antum lash tashkurun, whilst you do not perceive. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So now, if God is asking us to follow the best of what he has revealed, meaning, for instance, if you go to the Quran, you will have the story of uh, Iblis. The, the story of uh, Iblis is there. How Iblis was arrogant, uh, the, the kind of things he did. The stories of Pharaoh are there in the Quran. How Pharaoh was arrogant, how he went against the, the commands of God. Uh, the story of, uh, uh, who, who do I say? Uh, the story of Haman is there. The story of even genes are in the Quran. Does that mean as a human being who uses reasoning and common sense, does it mean you have to follow everything the Quran is telling you? No. The God who's, who gave you the Quran is telling you to follow the best of what he has revealed to you. Yes. He's not saying follow everything from the Quran. No. He, the same God, Quran chapter 2, verse 208, he says, he says, do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Where can we find the footsteps of the devil? It is in the Quran as well. God tells you about the devil. And he tells you that the conduct, the, the habit, the character of the devil. You find it in the Quran. Does that mean I have to follow that? Should I take that example and put it on myself and follow it? Do I need to do the same thing the devil is doing? The answer is no. But where do I find it? It's in the Quran. The habit of Fir'auna, where do I find it? It's here. The habit of Thamud and the Ad, and the people of Shu'aib, the people of Sali, the people of... Where do you find the stories? They are here. The people of Lut, where do you find it? They are here. Should I follow their habit also? No, don't be a fool when you are following the book of God. God never asks you to follow everything from the Quran. So if I say I believe in something, doesn't necessarily mean I follow it. You see the difference? I believe in the entirety of this Quran, but I'm not following everything from the Quran. There is a difference. I use the word believe and I use the word follow. I can believe Messi is the best player of the world, but I might not be his follower. So just because I believe he's the best player of the world doesn't mean necessarily mean I'm his fan or I'm his follower. So it goes away other way around. Quran chapter 39 verse 18. God says, Allazina wa He says, those who listen to the word and follow the best of it. If you listen to the word, follow the best of it. Those are the ones whom God has guided. And they are those who possess intelligence. Do you see how it works? Good. So if I have the book of God and I'm following, doesn't mean I'm following everything from the Quran. I, there are some things I believe in it, but I'm not going to follow that. So listen carefully. Listen and listen carefully. Right? Good. Now, the second question is, somebody asked me which of the groups, Sunni, Shia, Tijaniya, which of them are, is a Muslim? Which, which of the groups is a Muslim? None of them. Because if today you are against me, Baba Shuaim, okay, let's, let's assume I want to join Islam today. The Islam of, the man-made Islam you have, not the one the Quran speaks, speaks about, right? The one Quran speaks about is not for the mushriks. But let's assume I want to join the mainstream Islam, the fake Islam you have out there today, the Sunni, the Shia. The... You just ask them a simple question. Which one? Which one can you join? Is it Tariqa to Tijaniya? Is it Sun Sunnah? Is it Shia? 
Is he Ahmadiyya? Huh. Which one? Salafia? Sufia? You see how confused they are. And all these confused people say they are following Islam. <laughs> hey, who are you trying to fool here? If me, Baba Shaim, today I want to be a Muslim, according to your man made religions, I want to join one place, the truthful one. Which one should I come and join? Is it Shia? Is it Sunnah? Tijaniya? Ahmadiyya? Do you see why you are Mushriks? Do you, do you see why I call you Mushriks? Me, Baba Shoaib, I want to join your mom made sect today. Which one am I supposed to join? The Shia is confused. Ali Sunnah is confused because in Ali Sunnah they have Wahhabism and they have Salafia. They have Sufia. They are confused. Even in Ali Sunnah, they have Maliki, they have Hanbali, they have Shafi'i, they have Hanafi, and they don't agree with each other. They are confused. Wallahi lazim. They are confused. Okay. So Quran chapter 2 verse 130 says, Woman yargaba an millata Ibrahima illa man safiha nafsahu. And who desire other than the creed of Ibrahim, if not one who fools himself. So anybody who is following other creeds, hmm, the creed of uh, Sunnah, uh, Shia, Tijan, they are all, they are, they are fooling themselves. I'm not saying it. God said it. Quran chapter 22 verse 78. Let's see what God says concerning the real Islam. Quran chapter 22 verse 78. God says clearly, Wajahidu fillahi haqqa jihadi. Huwa ajitabakum wa maja ala alaykum fi din min haraj. Millata abikum ibrahima huwa sammakum al muslimin. Then he says, min qabl. Wa fi haza liyakuna rasulu shahidan alaykum. Wa takunu shuhada ala nas. فَأَكِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَآتَسِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ وَنِيمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِيمَ الْنَسِيرِ So God says, and struggle for God with the true struggling for him, to him, right? Then he says, he is the one who has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty uh, uh, in the deen upon you. He has not placed any difficulty on you in the deen. Listen carefully. Wamaja ala alaykum fiddin min haraj. He has not placed any difficulty upon you in the deen. So that's the deen in law. Chapter 3, verse 19. In the deen in the law in Islam. The submission. That's all what God needs to for you to submit that there is a creator of mankind and he controls the human destiny. That is al Islam. That is the deen God asks for you. It's not man made. Now, so God says he has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty upon you in the religion. Now ask yourself, how come your religion is difficult? How come what you are doing is difficult? You, are, you claim you are praying five times a day and it's difficult for you. The five negotiated prayers, the 50 ones, uh, according to your fake prophet in the Hadith, he went how many times to go and negotiate for you to come and do and it's still difficult for you. And the God of the Quran is telling you, he is the one who has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty upon you in the religion. So ask yourself, why is your religion difficult? Uh, the Mushriks, come and answer me. Why is your religion difficult? And then they will say, look, he wants the religion to be easy. That's why he wants to follow the Quran. Are you a fool? The God who gave you the Quran is telling you. He is the one who has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty upon you in the religion. And you are foolishly wanting your religion to be difficult. What makes you think Abraham is not right by telling you you lack common sense? So God says, Millata abikum Ibrahima, because that is the creed of our what? Ancestor Abraham. That is the one God says you should follow his creed. 
So Quran chapter 2 verse 130 God says woman yarga ba an millata Ibrahim illa man safiya nafsahu who will desire other than creed of other than the creed of Abraham if not one who fools himself So I call you a fool and you are upset it's common fool you are upset Oh I even forgot to bring my water today So I can give you more fire <laughs> Hey, the mushrik, skimpe mushriks, you die in your rage. Hey, mushriks. Hmm. Don't worry, I'll open the phone line soon. Let me just let me just write it down. Uh, let me answer the last two questions. Aha. Uh -huh. So these people will go ahead and then they say holy prophet. Look at the foolish mushriks again. They are so foolish and dumb. You are calling a human being who was lost and God guided him. Chapter 10, 93, verse 7. He was astray and God guided him. Chapter 42, verse 52. The one who never knew what the book of God was, nor the faith, the iman. You are calling him holy. Are you, are you in your right senses? Where, where, where did God ever call the prophet holy in this book? Come and show me one verse where it calls the prophet holy. 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 Why are the mushrik so foolish like that? What is wrong with your logic? Is that how the hadith is making you so stupid? You are calling an ordinary human being. You are calling him holy. Allah was sure can go back to the lafia. Hey, you are a fool to call Prophet Muhammad holy prophet. Where did God make him holy? Are you a fool? Seriously, are you a fool? Why are you calling that man holy? Where did God ask you to call him holy? Or where did he ever call himself in the Quran holy? You're calling an ordinary human being. You, you refuse to see what the Hadith books is trying to make you, enslave you mentally, enslave you to, to, to worship the Arab. You are elevating a race. You don't know. That is why Quran is not based on race. The Quran doesn't give credence to color. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. The Quran only told us the best among you are, is the what? The most pious of you. Quran chapter 49, verse 13. It says, Inna akramakum in the lahi atikakum. The most honorable eh, of you in front of God is the most pious of you. Right? Now you are fooling yourselves. Making the Sahih Bukhari tell you that Muhammad is the best of creation, another foolish doctrine again. Where did God ever tell you this rubbish? Why are you fooling yourselves? Huh? Why are you fooling yourselves? A man made garbage books telling you Muhammad is the best of creation? Or are you mocking your own prophets? You don't know. So this is why I kept repeating that the Prophet Muhammad of the Quran is way different from the Prophet Muhammad in the garbage books they have. Yes. Quran chapter 7, verse 157. I believe in him, even though I have not seen him before. I have not met him before. I believe he existed. I respect him. Wanasaruhu, I support him. Wattaba on Nura Lazi Unzila Mahu and follow the light which was sent down or revealed with him. I follow it. But what gives me the right to call him holy? Since when did Prophet Muhammad become holy? I dare any scholar to find me and, and show me where Prophet Muhammad is holy. Or he was tagged as holy. 
Will somebody who is holy be asked to ask for forgiveness for his mistake? Quran chapter 47 verse 19. Go and check. Prophet Muhammad was asked to ask for, for, for his uh, mistake that he did, the fault he committed. Quran chapter 40 verse 55. He was asked to ask for forgiveness. Hmm? How can this man be holy if you are in your right senses, tagging the prophet as holy? Hmm? Let's move on. So the next question, facing Kaaba. These people claim they are facing Kaaba. Quran chapter 2 verse 144 never mentioned anything about Kaaba. And it never talks about anything about prayer or salat. It never tells you when you are praying, face the Masjid al-Haram. The verse talks about Masjid al-Haram. The foolish, ignorant mushriks think Masjid al-Haram is the Kaaba. You see how dumb they are again. Quran chapter 5 verse 97 mentions Kaaba is the Bait al-Haram. Bait al-Haram is different from Masjid al-Haram. Bait al-Haram is the Kaaba next to the Masjid. God never asks you to pray facing Kaaba. He never asks you to pray facing Masjid al-Haram. He never asks you to worship Masjid al-Haram. He never asks you to worship Kaaba. You are a fool to worship that building there. Wallahi. Do you see? You are a fool to go and worship a stone and think your God is located in over there. Right? Now, <clears throat> the verse can be found in chapter 2, verse 140, uh, 44. It never, ever mentioned anything about Kaaba. The sectarians will force themselves to put Kaaba there. And so this is where he says, okay, ask them this simple question. If they are claiming that whenever you are doing Salat, you have to face the Masjid al-Haram, right? We all know what Masjid al-Haram is. According to the doctrine, it says a sacred mosque. Now, a sacred mosque is a mosque which has been built and then dedicated to God. That is why it's a sacred mosque. So now if you are inside the sacred mosque, we all know what a mosque is used for, huh? And the mosques are the places of worship for God. So do not invoke on anyone but God, right? That is, you don't invoke on anyone along with God in the masjids. But you see the mushriks write Allah here and write Muhammad here. And then always calling Muhammad in their mosque. That's why I call them mushriks. Wallahi, they are all mushriks. Now, if you are calling on Muhammad in your mosque, listen carefully, you are a mushrik. And again, if you are in the Masjid al-Haram, where will you face? You are saying, you the mushriks are saying, chapter 2 verse 144 is telling us that, oh, God says wherever we have, we should pray facing Masjid al-Haram. Is that so? Really? Is that so? Okay, let's assume. Let's assume it is so. So what if I go to Saudi Arabia and I enter into the Masjid al-Haram? Where am I going to face? Please help me, Mushriks, if you are here. Where am I going to face? Mushriks, where should I face? If I'm in the Masjid, where should I, am I going to face again? You see how confused you are. Good. Now, the last question before I open the phone lines. The hadith rejectors. What baffles me is when the mushriks tag somebody who follows the Quran, the hadith rejecter. Are you a fool? The Quran on its own is hadith. Ahsan al-hadith. God even classifies it as a best hadith. Quran chapter 39 verse 23. Then he throws a challenge. Faliyatu bi hadith in mithlihi in kenu suadikim. Bring an hadith like it if you should be truthful. You the mushriks. This is the hadith I follow. I don't reject hadith. I reject garbage hadith. Yes. 
I reject garbage hadith. You think you have these are not garbage? I will open the phone lines. Come, I dare you. Allah ka ganguta. Ka ganguta. You think your hadiths are not garbage, right? Good. I will open the phone lines. You come and prove to me where your hadith is not garbage. You call me hadith rejecter when you foolishly reject hadith yourselves. You the hadith mushriks. Some hadith you reject. Even though it's Sahih Bukhari, you reject it. Sahih Muslim, you reject it. Right? So now let me expose them before I quote some stupid hadith for you. So I take you to Quran chapter 6, verse 112 to 113. For the new listeners who are here, please listen carefully if this criteria is not talking about hadith followers. God says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَأَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ أَدُوًّا شَيَاتِينَ شَيَاتِينَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنِ يُوهِي بَعْدُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْدٍ زُخُرَفَ الْقَوْلِ الْقُرُورَ وَلَوْ شَا رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوا لِنْفَزَرُهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ So then he says, وَلِتَزْغَى إِلَيْهِ آفِدَةُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَلِيَرْدَعُوا Then he says, وَلِيَخْتَرِفُوا مَا هُمْ مُقْتَرِفُونَ The verse is saying, and thus have we made enemies for every prophet. So every prophet had enemies. Every prophet. Moses, Abraham, all of them, including Muhammad himself. He had enemies. And thus have we made enemies for every prophet. Devils of humans and genes inspiring to each other the decoration of delusive speech. That is statement. Like the Hadith books. And if your Lord had willed, they will not have done it. So leave them and what they fabricate. You see what God is saying. Leave them and their garbage Hadith. Leave them. To follow their garbage hadith. The books that tell them the prophet married six years old girl. The book that tells them the prophet slept with nine women in one night. The book that tells them killing people for apostasy is okay. The book that tells them you have to kill every disbeliever on earth. God says leave them and what they fabricate. 113. So that the minds of those who do not believe in the hereafter will incline to it in order to approve it. Now, do you see something fishy here? The books they have fabricated, they are the ones who approve it and say, this is Sahih, this is Da'if, this is Hassan, this is Kudusi. They are the ones who approve it and give it the licensing. Yes, they approve their own hadith, their scholars, especially Imam Albani, from Albania. He was one of the scholars who actually re what arranged the, the Sahih Hadith for them and chose Sahih, Sahih, Sahih for them. Your prophet will say something. Then you have somebody years after him, uh, hundreds of years after him to come and sit down and then cross check and say, okay, yeah, the prophet said this. I take it correct. I take it correct. You can follow this. Oh, don't follow this. No, the prophet, I don't think he said this. Put this one aside. No, take that one. Take the, the one he slept with small girl, nine years. Yeah, take that one. I think that one makes sense. Uh, give it to the people. They'll follow it. You are following man-made doctrines without using your common sense. And you think you are, you are religious. Foolish mushriks. And God says, and to commit what they are committing. So whatever the Hadith books tells them, they will do it. Whatever the Quran says, they don't do do you see the mushriks? If the hadith tell them, go and kill him, they will do it. The Quran says it, no. Allah mushrikanga. Wallahi tamun kuyakai. Eh. Eh. 
Okay, so let me quote the last last, last hadith before uh, we, we finish this. Here, I'm putting this, let me see if I can put it here. Abraham says, if the Quran is preserved in heaven, are the Hadiths also preserved in heaven? No, they are not. Hadiths are not even the books of God. Seriously. Exactly. Uh... Okay, let me put the, uh, I wanted to put the Hadith here. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can do that. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I wanted to share something here. Yeah, but I'll do it this way. No problem. Okay. So one of the hadith, uh, which can be found in Sahih al-Bukhari 2000. That is Sahih al-Bukhari. Let me put the reference. People can search it up. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2,420. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2,420. Yeah. This one. This hadith says, narrated by Abu Huraira. Huh? He says, the prophet said, no doubt I intend to order somebody to produce the ikama of the prayer. Then I will go to the houses of those who do not attend the prayer and burn their houses over them. Really? Really? So your hadith is claiming your prophet is forcing people to come to the salat. So if they don't come, you go and burn their houses. Why is it Look at the terrorist act. Do you see why I said the prophet of the Hadith is a fake prophet? Do you see it? The prophet of the Hadith is a fake prophet. It never existed. Wallahi, it never existed. It's a fake one. So all these acts they are saying he wants to, it doesn't exist. It's not part of the Islam God has given him in the Quran. That is narrated Abu Huraira. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2420. He says, the prophet said, no doubt I intend to order somebody to pro pronounce the ikama of the prayer. And then I will go to the houses of those who do not attend the prayer and burn their houses over them. Wow. Wow. And burn their houses. Do you see what the fake prophet in the hadith says? Good. Then the next hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. I put it here. Sahih al-Bukhari. One hundred and eighty-eight. Sahih al-Bukhari. One hundred and eighty-eight. Let me highlight the hadith so people can search it. Here. It says what? Listen what the hadith says. It says the prophet, uh, it, uh, that's Sahih Bukhari, narrated by Abu Musa. The prophet asked for a tumbler containing water, right? And washed both his hands and face in it and threw, and threw a mouth full of water in the tumbler right a mouth his mouth full of water then he threw it inside 
and said to both of us, Abu Musa and Bilal, drink from the tumbler and pour some of its water on your faces and chests. Sahih al-Bukhari 188. Do you see the rubbish here? Does it look like the prophet of the Quran will do this rubbish? No. You pour the water from your, your mouth in the tumbler, telling people to wash it with their faces and their chest. For what? That's what the Hadith books give you. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? And again, Sahih al-Bukhari, I write the next one. Sahih al-Bukhari 3,321. Three thousand three hundred and twenty-one. What does it say? Narrated by Abu Huraira. He said what? Allah's messenger said a prostitute was forgiven by Allah because passing by a, a panting dog near a well and seeing that the dog was about to die of test, she took off her shoe and tying, uh, and tying it with hair head cover she drew out some water for it so allah forgave her because of that <laughs> they are encouraging prostitution right your sahih al-bukhari books is encouraging prostitution for ladies to go and do prostitution and later find dogs to give them water so that god will forgive them right is that what you're telling us good that is your sahih bukhari books and again sahih al-bukhari 3,322. 3,322. What does it say? Narrated by Abu Talha. The prophet said, angels do not enter a house that has either a dog or a picture in it. Listen, the hadith says, the prophet said, angels do not enter a house that has a, either a dog or a picture in it. Now look behind me. There's a picture there. Right? And again, they say, if you have a dog, the angels don't enter. Oh my God. Do you see how the hadith books are making people so foolish and dumb? And this is classified as Sahih al-Bukhari. This is classified as Sahih al-Bukhari. So that means if I have a dog and a picture in my house and I'm grown up, I'm an old aged man, that means the angels are not coming to me. I'm not dying. I will live till about a thousand years if I'm not going out. Because then this modern day and age, you just be ordering food online. Yours is just to shower, sit in your balcony, stay there, put picture and dog next to you. That's it. You are safe. <laughs> Allah, Allah, Hadisenga. Hmm. Again, uh, let me put the last one before I put my phone number. So, Sahih Al Bukhari, these are all classified as Sahih. <laughs> the Mushriks will tell you, oh, no, I don't believe in this one. This one, I don't believe in it. I put the next evidence Sahih Al Bukhari 3175. 3175 this last hadith says what he says what uh, narrated by aisha the woman who never existed oh uh, is she the woman no the girl that girl who never existed in the quran once the prophet was bewitched so so that he began he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not <laughs> you see how foolish these mushriks are they are same hadith books are claiming that the prophet was bewitched and then he began to imagine that he had done something that in fact he has not done it by his imagining and you claim these books are the books of islam are you in your right senses or are you just foolish and dumb why are the mushrik so foolish like this and you claim this is a religious book and your scholars make it sahih 
Or is it because you don't study to see how foolish the religion is making you? It say they are claiming Nana Aisha narrated this, and which is haram in the first place for the prophet's wife, according to Quran chapter 66, verse, uh, verse 3 to verse 4, for them to even go out with any statement concerning the prophet to tell anybody. It is haram according to the Quran. Then here you have a, a lady who never even existed. They are attributing her to the prophet, saying she is the wife of the prophet, the one who he married at six years. Are you... <laughs> Uh, these people hmm. once the prophet was bewitched he's saying the prophet was bewitched these people are crazy wallahi the mushriks are crazy you are claiming the prophet was bewitched after god telling him in quran chapter 5 verse 67 nas. god says he will protect him from the people you are claiming he was bewitched rajulam mashura right <laughs> and you are you and me and you mushriks who is the enemy of islam <laughs> hey. okay ladies and gentlemen i'm going to put up my phone number three five eight four six six eighty three one four four WhatsApp call only, please. I put my phone number. Hey, salam, Sali Snaganka. I put my phone number up. Let me put it on the screen. That's the phone number. You can keep make your calls come in. Yeah, somebody called. I called a person back, but it seems their their line is busy. And then uh, Abdul Jalil. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. At least I we we are so good to you. But I have a question about the prayers. Okay. Um, I, uh, or how many raka are the prayers? Because um, I, I, it's like I've asked a question on your WhatsApp, but you are not able to attend to it. Um, we, see, we have seen that the uh, Prophet Muhammad, when in the war, he, he prayed two raka as the followers were praying one raka, one raka. And then the other side too, uh, the two salat you mentioned, the Isha and Fajr, we are still trying to complete that because we can get a, um, the Quran 17, We can see that as the sun declines, so we have fixed a, a salat there, so we also have three of them. We have Fajr, we have Zul, we have Isha, but it looks like we are kicking the first zero hours of one declaration from that. First of all, who who the salat you are doing? Where did he get it from? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I said first of all, the salat you are doing. Where did you get from? Um, uh, we have gone to the verse you put it as uh, chapter seven. Uh, verse 78. From there, we are getting three salats. 
But yesterday, um, I watched one of your videos, you were trying to explain it, and you were saying that there are two salads there, and then the next verse, 79, gives you uh, gives us the third one. And then we are getting this one. What is it? Uh, 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 I am on. 78. Uh -huh. So that is a verse. So, so that is a verse. Stay, 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 stay there. Wait. Okay. In the verse, how did you get three salads there? How do we? In the 1778, you said how many salads you got? You got there. Uh, 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 we are seeing three salads there. So, uh, but you in your explanation in one of your uh, uh, what is it the YouTube? You explain that there are two salads there. Okay, let's see how you got the three. Let's analyze. The 1778 says, Akim is Salata. Now it is giving you, it is giving the prophet a command, not us. It started with the prophet, right? The word Akimi is, is, is used for a second person pronoun. So it's a singular person being addressed here. So it says, Akim is Salata. Establish the Salat. Then it started giving you the time frame. It started giving you the time frame. Now, if you have established the Salat, Liduluk is Shams. The word duluk comes from the word delaka. When we say delaka, it means to decline, to set, to fade away, yes. to rub something away. That is dalaka. So now God is giving you the time frame. He says liduluk is shams. So he's using the sun to give you the timing for the salat. So when he says liduluk is shams, then now it used a preposition by saying ila gasakilai. If it's just like I tell you that start cooking. I tell you, start the cooking. Hmm? Mm -hmm. mm. At the standing of the what? Of the let's see, let me, what shall I use? Uh, now, at the sounding of the bell, until mm. it stops. I might command you to do one thing or two things. Uh, you are asking me to do one thing. Okay, you are asking me to do, do one thing. So now, uh, it means that, uh, okay. So now, God used liduluki. Then he continued by saying yes. ila gasaki. So that means that thing is a present continuous. It keeps going. It has not ended yet. That one thing I've instructed yes. you has not ended. So if okay. it says ila gasaki lay, that is where it will stop. Yes. Okay. Then he says wa Quran al fajr. Okay. So now, if this instance has mentioned two, what, because the why is a conjunction, is to put okay. two things simultaneously up in different times. So it has put a conjunction okay. there by saying what Quran al Fajr. Now you said you got three. I want to know how you did you get three in this verse? How? No, um, uh, maybe we didn't understand because we were thinking that from the beginning there is a when it ends there is a prayer. And uh, then uh, uh, the the Quran, that is how we saw. It. So maybe with your explanation, we we'll sit down and look at the verse again. Anyways, br bring your question. Bring your that question you asked. Let, then let me take the next caller. What was the the, the next question you asked? Okay. The first one. The first one. The, you said we should use the prophets as an example. I never. And I never said, said that. I never said that. So where we had a um, um, uh, prophet Moses removing the sandals in, in your submission, you said that that is why when we are going to pray, we remove our sandals. Not to do one of your rephrase, rephrase, rephrase so, your, yes, but rephrase your statement well. Maybe you didn't say okay, it well, that's okay. why I said I didn't say that. Okay, okay, okay. So, what I'm saying is that uh, we saw that in the war, prophet Muhammad. Three, two, raka, but they follow three, one, raka, one, raka. So if it is going to be an example to us, wouldn't it be that we have to pray to raka when we are not in war? But you are not the leader. He led people to do the first raka. The, the salat ended or didn't it end? It ended. Good. The second people who came, they did one raka with him. The salat ended or not ended? It, it ended. Good. Now, throughout the Quran, there is no verse where God says he gave you two rakat, three rakat, four rakat, five rakat. It doesn't exist that way. 
Yeah, okay. Okay. Do you see my point? Okay. Yes, I'll see you. So it will all base on the yes. Imam, the leader leading you. If he decides to do two rakat, that's up to him because he is leading you. Do you get my point? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Let me put pick, pick up the next caller. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, look at uh, another mushrik, Muhammad Mutawakil. Why are the mushrik so foolish like this? Huh? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Naam. How are you? Naam. Ramadan. What are you going to say? Boko. Oh, you can't even cry, eh? Ah, bro, you can't even cry. You can't even cry. Okay, no problem. You can't even cry. I'm going to cry. But time is not the same. You can't even cry. You can't even cry. You can't even cry. Uh, okay, my first question is uh, Quran chapter 2, verse 144. Mm -hmm. え、もし、コミュニティ、もはもそらそら。なんかこんせ、もうせ、ワペジャウティ、エフェソロ、セセネベア。なんかこんべチャウダ、アレシナ。オベシェ、エディアイエ、サンラ。ミサンティ、
into Ufa chapter 2, verse 143. Obeti context na ase. Eye, eye, sufa ha, no. Sufa ha, or among the people, no. Omu no omu kase, what turned the people away from the Kibla which they used to be upon? So what you say? Aha, inti, aha, no. Nyami e, chire mu se, afe na waman isa Kibla, no. Kibla, majid el haram, bibi a uwe establish salat, and in a friend Kibla. Enu ada, enu, enu bi, na nyami di ma, Musa, ni Harun. Omoni, omun krofu, chapter 10, verse 80, 87. Ewa hosa ha. But Sai Kibla, no, it has nothing to do with Salat here, whereby you have to establish Salat and face Masjid al Haram. Any hosa. In the mess a new video, no, mess a new short video, no, no, wait ye video, no, who are further questions, sir. Now with the Abana Machiru, no, Namiado. Okay, okay, Martin, me, mm. me, me question I toss with you. Mm hmm. Pacho, Pacho, sir, oh, my friend say, oh, yes, Allah. Yes, me, yes, Allah, yeah. Bajo Raka do Dosena, Yayan was seldom. A Koran friend Raka, say Yeraka Munumi and Saf and any was a okay. Yeah. Tim Pacho Quabas and video in now, and you meet me at Ram, and only a big deal cry. No, and I don't know like. Yes, Kiam Woho, Ruku Woho, Sujud Woho, yes, a Wahosa. Yeah. Uh, 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 Mr. Wan Pachoma, my time can give so me went to know Pesemi. Then I'll cut a video soon and cut me here saying over send this and the video number, my name, 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 Surah Al-Nahl, chapter 16, verse 44. Mm-hmm. Um, Pacho, how do you know that you have to make a king king? Chapter 16, verse 44. Obeka, wa'anza na ilayka zikra, li tubayyina lin nas ma'anun zila ilayhim. Yeah. Aha. Wala allahum yatafakarun. Mm-hmm. Now, Pacho, li tubayyina lin nas ma'anun. Mm-hmm. Pacho, ase chiran sasen. Ana verse na anka sanun ke, yen king king biya, sasen ebeya. Where is your verse? I me want a short video. I match re match re verse in me. Nini na wo mi YouTube channel. Uti. And we have sent down unto you the message to that. Enka. Explain clearly. Explain on the main things. Enka. Enya explain. No. Enya explain. Nyami anka tafsir waho. Wanka fassara waho. Wan onbo wed tafsir waho. Debi onka se onye fassara. Tubayina. Enwa na nyami yusi yen chapter 3 verse 187. Enwa na nyami yusi yen chapter 2 verse 160. When we say tubayina, to manifest them, to bring something out, to reveal it, to declare it to the people. Enye se u explaini. Nyami wa explaini korandada. So what you say? Inti mi malam no mi 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 malam no say mi bi say o say. Mhm. Inti le tu ba yina na o ka say nyankopon mpa cho ko wachi bi mo say nyankopon le tu ba yina no nyankopon say to the to declare. To declare. Mhm. Who de who declare abia adia to to bring to like I say what reveal adia to make it clear adia am am for him and I would be out yes. Ah. To declare no better, who call be yina no? Ewo kura fans in English mo. Imala msa who call be be yina no? Who be nya the word explain no so so ewo ho? In tisana e wrong ana. No, e nya wrong. Ni ni meaning ewo multiple meanings, but anytime e ya e se uncheck it siyak no context no. The context decides the word's meaning. In the context no, and it doesn't allow explain there. Uti. Because how say no? How say no? Sena Quran ni sikaya no. Se yamba ni se mimi ni converter no. Ebe yamaji ni mwenye tata because otunfu ni 
Kofon said, and we have sent down unto you the message so that you may declare. Enka the message. Anami Kofon said, you should declare. Koran, where is it? Enka the message. He doesn't see the message. Sir, I think my version now, I'm going to say your Koran version now. I'm going to say this is an echo to to unto you the message. When we say message in Arabic, it's a risala. Yeah. So what I say? Yeka risala, risala, a message in Arabic. Zikr, zikra, enye enye risala. Zikra means remembrance. Remembrance. Exactly. But man, man, who feed you be like as a walk as a who use who use the zikr no? Actually, say the message. No. Message and I'm going to find the map. No. And baby, many, many, many sa. videos are me. Oh, videos are Fabri and Amisha. Many videos are why? Ma send you, ma send you link no, about the Kibla. No, the kind of share no answer. Name in family scholar. Ya che wo line so so. Oh, my um, that's me, me available. Bibi, I would have contacted me next time. Here, program, I'll give you the chance to come. Don't worry. <clears throat> okay, yeah, yeah. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. <clears throat> yes uh sorry for that the, the caller unfortunately has to speak three language and i have to go over with him on certain things most of the questions he has asked ask, i've already addressed them in the video i have it on my youtube channel these are these are basic questions i've already answered so i don't i don't want to keep staying online repeating myself it doesn't give me value in my explanation anymore <clears throat> Hello, Sam. Alaikum, brother Shahid. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, your name and where are you calling from? My name is Abdul Mawan from Tamale. Uh huh. Abdul Mawan from Tamale, Ghana, Tamale, right? Ghana. Okay, that's nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, I want you to tell me how the Quran talked about insult. 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 Does Quran like it? Does it order you to insult people? Uh, what the Quran say about insult? Well, insulting people. Uh, first of all, uh, let me see if I can give you some few verses. When we go to Quran, right. chapter 49, and then verse 11, we go to verse, let's say, uh, 11. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry. Let me give you the verse. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. So carry on with your questions behind that so that I, I can... Yes, yes. I, I wanted you to understand. You explain to me, talk about it. How God talk about insult? Is, is it, does it, does God order you in the Quran mm -hmm. to insult people? No, it depends. God it depends you not to insult people no it doesn't say it like that it depends how you define then, the word uh wait it depends no, how no insult in any form is insult you know wait it carries emotional pain and i said wait it depends right. how you define something as an insult in the first place all right some things can be right. said to a person it's not an insult it's a description then we have certain things which can right. be said to a person which becomes an insult. For instance, if somebody is not right. mad and you say you are mad, it's an insult. If somebody, right. Right. yes, if somebody is not a fool and you tell him you are a fool, it's an insult. Insult. You understand? Because that is an offensive thing. But if somebody is guilty of a crime yeah. and he's guilty of a crime as a criminal, and you call him a criminal, we don't call that an insult. Insult. All right. Do you see the point? Uh huh. So it depends on yeah, how a person. So let me. Please, can let you read? Please, please, can you, <clears throat> can you read the 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 verse? Explain to me what God exactly talks about insult in the Quran first. The insult God talks about in Quran chapter forty nine verse eleven. He says, "Oh, you who believe, do not let people ridicule any people. Perhaps they may be better than them. Nor shall women do against women. Perhaps they may be better than them." And do not criticize yourselves. 
Then he said, nor shall you insult, listen, insult each other by nicknames. Wretched is the name of immorality after the faith. And whoever does not repent, then those are the ones, those are the transgressors. Then verse 12. Yes, shall not insult each other by what? Nicknames. Yes. Yes, defining mm -hmm. that a nickname you call somebody in his, you know, in his inaction. It's what? Insult, right? When, when you what? When you call somebody a nickname against the person's feeling, you know, it's no. an insult, right? When you call it's the person, insult. now listen carefully what the verse name. is. The verse is, right. do not insult each other by nicknames. Nicknames, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So how did you understand I that verse? You only... Yes, it, it, it does insult us not to insult each other. Not to insult each other. So let me give you an it's example. I give you an example. So if you are, if you go to, for example, if you go to steal somebody's money, no, do not. Sorry, let me let me let me take on this one first. Yeah. Don't give example. Don't explain. Quran is self-explanatory book according to you. But now according we are not talking you, about the Quran. It's a self-explanatory book. We are not. No, but that's why we are going by. That's why we are going by. If all the scholars have no right, to, you know, use their intellectual knowledge to talk about Quran verses. Uh -huh. Who are you here to use the verses to explain to us what it means? Those who have, where no, uh, live with him, brother, right. They are not qualified enough. So, brother, let me make my point before you come. Brother, not qualified enough. Brother, listen, to, listen first before you make your point. Listen, all right. You called on the program, right. you asked me to tell you what the verse says, right? And I told you what is, the yes. verse says, right? First yes. of all, you, when you call, the, 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 sorry, sorry, let me tell you, the verse is revealed. You are just mentioning it to me, they revealed a long time before you born. Oh, so Don't brother, you, brother, wait, please, chill, chill. Are you here to argue or are you here to listen? Okay, I'm here to listen. Uh -huh. So let me talk, please. Then, okay. Go when ahead. you ask a question, I opened a verse and I told you what it says. I don't know if you understand the meaning of tell or told. I don't, I don't know. But I told you what the verse says. After telling you what the verse says, now you put you wanted to put a narrative there. So now we are done with the verse. Then I told you, brother, if somebody goes to steal, I've not even finished the statement. Sorry, then sorry, you that's, why, that's, that's what I want. That, that's why I don't want you to go there. Don't give me an example. Ah, what, do, what do you mean? Uh, no, wait. Says. What do you mean you don't want me to go there? Are you the one going to show no, me how I want to you talk? To give example. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't tell stories around the Quran. Ayah. Don't tell stories around it. Tell us exactly what is in the Quran and the meaning. So that we'll go by only the Quran. Brother, we'll you don't you are, you know, brother, to... if you are willing to compromise, I can allow you to talk. If you are not willing, I'll cut you off and take the next caller because you are not making sense right now. Ah. All right. Let me, let if me I am talking, why are you telling me you don't want me to talk? Me and my program, you are not going to allow me to make my statements. <laughs> are you serious? I said, if somebody goes to steal regularly and he's stealing and I call him a thief, is it an insult according to your English? Is that an insult? Let's refer to the Quran. I'm asking you a simple question, brother. A simple question. The Quran is an insult. Yes, who? according to the Quran, it's an insult. Is it an insult? It's a nickname. Ah, okay. So what's what? It's a nickname what? to somebody who I just to steal is it is it an insult yeah it's an insult to somebody who has just killed okay brother quran chapter 109 yeah. verse 1 quran chapter 109 verse 1 what did god ask the prophet to call the, the kafirun to call the kafri yes god asked them who is a kafir brother quran chapter 109 yeah. verse 1 do you know what it says yeah no, I don't know. I just want to find out who is a kafir. So you don't know what the verse says? You, you said God has prepared to call kafir. Yes. Yes. So it's... it's what, come on, and then I'll ask you, what is the, who is kafir here? So you don't know. Then you... Sorry, brother. If you don't know, I cannot help you right now. I know where. I, want, I wanted to, ask, to explain. I said, brother, to explain the Quran by your own statement and examples, and don't want any scholar. 
brother. Bring closer to the prefect to make references to the Quran and and explain it in their own context. Brother, are you? That's a why I find it difficult now. You are, are you, a chance brother. to use the Quran, use your own native knowledge to explain. Brother, are you a scholar? I, are you I'm not a, a scholar to understand your points well? Whether we should go by the Quran, like you decide, or like you, you know. And um, now I'm using the Quran. I'm using the Quran to give you answers. You are here, hibijibi is going up and down, right. confused. The prophet was asked to call I'm people kafirun. So the prophet yeah, made a mistake, I'm, right? I'm, I'm not confused. The prophet made a the, mistake. The name, the name itself is an insult. The name itself is an insult. If you are called kafirun, it's an insult. Oh, so the prophet was insulting them in chapter 109, verse 1. Really? The prophet was the, the prophet. The prophet was ordered by God to call all them. So uh, order you to do something. That cannot be wrong. But if I'm following the footsteps of the prophet, what mistake have I done to repeat the same thing? <laughs> you can, you you can't tell me here. You are following footsteps of the prophet. You are saying that only the Quran, not Sunnah. Are you not the one telling us? Well, the same person tell us that we should follow only the Quran. And I'm telling you. When somebody read Quran Surah, you go ahead, making your own reference and example, using your own logic. Brother, you, what kind of knowledge? Brother, the Quran, is it a guidance of mankind or not? Uh, guys, next caller, the guy came to argue. Quran chapter 109. God asked the prophet to call the disbelievers, Ya you al Kafirun. Is it an insult? No. Quran chapter 39 verse 64, God asked the prophet, the messenger, to call to tell his people, are you all jahilun, ignorant people? Is it an insult? No, they are ignorant. Quran chapter 41 verse 6, to give warning to the mushriks, waili lil mushrikun. Is it an insult? No. <laughs> you see the problem with ignorance. <clears throat> Uh, brother, Hello. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. brother, okay. if you are here to ask a question, ask your question, then I pick the next caller, please. Uh, I don't argue with people who are not up to that level, please. Uh, sorry, the next caller before I end the program, uh, I think uh, most of two hours, so I'm. Um, <sighs> Muhammad Mutawakkil, I have a lot of he says I have a lot of questions to answer, right? So why don't you call? My number is there on the page. Be, be have some balls and call. And embarrass yourself like the caller who just embarrassed himself right now. <laughs> Where are they? they are not calling. Hello, Jack, I want to add, uh, uh, suggest something. Uh, if your people will be arguing with you on the uh, platform, uh, please pick three calls at a time and then start answering them. But if you want to just answer it instantly, you see that they will try to argue with you and we might not benefit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I agree. I agree. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, I agree. That is just a suggestion. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for that. Thank you. Thumbs up. Thank you. Yes, okay. I agree. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Adam, calling from Ghana. You're welcome, Adam. All right. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions. Bring on your questions. 
I want to know if the Sahabis of the Prophet Muhammad have ever asked him any questions about any ayah that their God have given to Prophet Muhammad before. I want to know. Well, according to the Quran, it doesn't say Sahaba or Sahabi asking question. It just says, if for instance, they are asking him about, uh, let's say, the spirit. Yes, ruhu. You understand? Then God will show him the answer to ask, uh, to tell. Okay. If they ask him, yes, okay. if they ask you about wine and uh, gambling, then God will give him the answer to ask. It doesn't say from the narrative the way the Hadith explains to you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then my yeah. question here is, if he give them answer to them, so where is the answer now? Is the answer in the Quran or in Hadith? Yes, it's in the Quran. Whenever God says, the whenever the God tells him, yes, Quran chapter 2, verse 219, for example, the answer is found there. You get the, the answer of the Rasul in the Quran. So, okay, so we heard that the Sabi asked him how to do Salat for him. It doesn't exist in the Quran. There is nothing like, yes, in the Quran. It doesn't exist. So where where is it? Hey, by the way, by the way, where are you getting this statement from? Where is your question coming from? Which book? I'm, I'm just asking. That's what we had. Do I want to ask you a few questions? You heard you heard from where? So do you know, from people. So I'm going to ask you. Uh huh. Do you do you know about uh, Slatul Ibrahima? It is not in the Quran. It's not in the Quran. So where did they get it from? Are you asking me? I'm defending the Quran. Yeah, I'm, just I'm following the Quran. So, so that means that means Salat Ibrahim is not from God, right? Yeah, you go and ask the ones who've invented it for themselves. Well, I'm just asking you. I mean, you say you 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 everything that about Islam you are you are you have to know. So I'm asking Salat Ibrahim that we are. Where God, where did I say that, brother? It's not from God. Oh no, it's not like you said you said that. I'm just asking. We are we have so lot that we have we do for Can I ask you can I ask you a question? Okay, ask me. Do you do taya in your salat? Taya, yeah, I do. Who asked you to do taya in your salat? Who asked me? Why are you repeating because my question? The prophet have been, have been have been have been doing the witness of the prophet who are his service. Who are the best of knowledge that everybody <laughs> said the prophet is doing salat this ta -ta 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 -ya. okay so how can i okay let me let me help you here so the tayyat you sit okay. in your salat you tell god atayyatu uh -huh. lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat uh -huh. then now you tell prophet assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyyu so you sit in your salat you are praying to god uh -huh. then you ended up doing salam upon the prophet Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. Now when I say assalamu alayka, do you know what it means? You have to explain. I ask you a question. I said do you know what it means? No, I don't know. You don't, don't know. know. So but do you do you do it in your salat? I do it in my, my salat. So how come you're doing something you don't know? Very good. That's a very good question. You ask me about tayya. That's uh, I'm doing tayya. That the that the Quran is said for me to do tayya. So right now, me, I'm going to ask you, how do you do your salat? You haven't answered my question. Uh, you asked me about tayya. I said I didn't know, but I do it. I believe it. God said, believe. We we believe. So I'm brother, you. brother. God says, walata kafuma leisa lakabiin. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. Do you know God says that? Knowledge? Yeah, no, but for Taya, we believe anything that observes. Brother, we, we are like talking about believe. knowledge, not believe. God says, do I'm not tired, follow. I believe. Do you have knowledge of what you're doing? I have knowledge of what I'm doing. I know I have everything that I'm doing. I have the knowledge. So what I'm trying Show to me, is, then how do you do your salat? You haven't answered the first question first. I said I don't know, so let's move. Uh, this one is simple. You don't know. Uh, 
I don't know. So let's move. You come back to me when you know the how answer to do, that question, okay? How do you do your sound? Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Salam. I just want to thank you for your program and ask you some questions. You're welcome. Thank you. Can you introduce yeah. yourself? Please. My name is Akim. Akim, yeah. From? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. I wanted to check. Quran 33, verse 50. 33, verse 50. Surah Tula yes, Ahzab. verse 50. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. <clears throat> You can check everything from there, and it says that if you if you read it, that if you get a place that God God says to the prophet that it is only Him. You see, all that He has, He says that it is only Him, excluding the other three things. I want to understand your question. Give me your question first, then we move on. Yes. I think if you check if you check it properly. Yeah, I want to know but if what, what is other believers question? can also marry. <clears throat> I want to know if other believers can also marry daughters from their paternal uncles and their paternal uh, this aunties. Yeah, Ragas, I'm coming. Uh, when you check the verse, it says, Oh, you prophet, indeed, we have made lawful to you your wives, whom you have given their fees, as well as those your right hand possess. Right then, he yes. says, "From what God has awarded to you and the daughters of your paternal <laughs> uncle, the daughters of your paternal aunt, the daughters of your maternal uncle, the daughters of your <laughs> maternal aunt, who emigrated with you, they emigrated with him. So he has been given that permission, as well as a believing woman, if she presents herself to the prophet, if." the prophet intends to marry her then he says exclusively for you other than the believers right yes then he says yes. we have certainly made known what we have obligated for them concerning their wives yes. that is the believers god has that that means the believers god has already obligated for them separately we can find it in chapter 4 verse 24 to 25 is there yes, chapter 4 verse 24 Huh? So it, it means yes. It means clearly, can we say clearly? If you if your marries a, a daughter from his uncle's side, it's against uh, Islam. No, no, no. The verse. If you check Quran chapter four, verse twenty four, twenty five. Huh? The restrictions God yes. gave. That is that wasn't classified under the restrictions. Do you, do you get my point? Okay. The restrictions God gave yes. for the believers in Quran chapter 4, verse 24 to 25, that restriction that restriction wasn't added there. So if that restriction yes. doesn't wasn't added there, the believer has no guilt. But the, the list the list here, the, the reason why God says exclusively, God was just giving a, a reference point, meaning he's from his own family exclusively for him that is why after him nobody is supposed to worry marry the wives of the prophet after him okay okay you understand so the exclusive the, the khali satan was only that he has been made from his family any woman he will marry nobody else has the right to marry that no believer else can marry that is why it was made exclusively like that but it doesn't mean that uh, believers cannot also marry in the same criteria from other families. No. Oh, the line, the line dropped. So, yeah. Uh, let me see. I can pick on one more caller. Just a minute. Yeah, uh, Salam, come on, hold on, hold on a minute. Just stay on a minute. Uh,
Yeah. Come on, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Please, I just want to thank you for what you are doing. You are doing great. Thank you very much. And, uh, if not, these people, they just don't want the truth. I know. That's what they want. I know. I don't want the truth. Quran, Quran, Quran 43, 78 says, walakinna aktarakum lil haq It says, we have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. So it, it, it's eventually, it's evident that they hate the truth. That's why, yeah. Yes, because the Quran is just the best hadith. So yes. where can you best, other than the best from God? Yeah. It's like they don't just reason. Never, they don't. Right. They don't. Thank you very much, uh, Kamal. I appreciate that okay. for your call, and yeah. you keep watching. Thank you very much. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Next caller. Before I end my program, uh, uh, please, please, if if you are not knowledgeable, please don't call me to embarrass yourself. Like you want to banter with me back and forth. I will embarrass you. I'm serious. Try, make sure you are learned to come and exchange with me. I'm serious. I will embarrass you totally. Mr. Shari. Yeah. Yeah, the, the link that you sent to me, mm. I didn't see how perform salam. I, I didn't see it. Like, how do you perform salam? You say you can stand up, kiyam, roku, and sujud. As you said, but brother, I, I brother, found it in, brother, the, in the link. Brother, the link I sent you, the video I sent you, what was it about? You are just explaining. I just want a demonstration as a new converter to know how to perform my salat. Brother, the video I sent you, I said, what was yeah. it about? It's about how to perform. Uh, hello? The, hello the 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 video i sent you wasn't about how to perform salat yeah. you ask the question concerning kibla right yeah it's, it's it's i have just two videos i sent the you one is concerning about about kibla you sent just one link but what when i click on it YouTube, I saw it's like two videos. No, I just no, went to the second video. No, it's one video. I sent you the one video first, the Kibla one. Have you finished watching yeah. it? Yeah, I just listened some, uh, uh, some one, two, three, some two minutes. Deep. But I get what you are, you are saying. Okay, no problem. And my problem is how to perform salat. No how problem. Salat. Uh, brother, Ramadan. Brother Ramadan, these are questions. I yeah. have it. I will send you the link, yeah. right? I only sent you the first please, one. Can you, can you, can, can, please, can you, can on your show, perform or demonstrate how to perform so that I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'm not here for that. Yeah. I don't repeat something I've already done oh. when there's a video. Are you, no, are you listening not, to me? It's not like that. I don't know. I don't know. As I said, I'm a new converter. But are you, are you listening to me? I'm listening, but I Good. said I want If you are to listening to me, no, listen to me. You don't give me or instruct me what to do on my program. No, this no, is my like program, that, my but God. listen to no, me. Like listen to like me. That. You are not paying me yeah, for what yeah. I'm doing. Listen. Yeah, I know, I, but you are educating us. And I said, I my you brain. don't, I please. And you are saying this is not, brother, this is not how it is. Brother, I'm asking you to listen to me. A big okay. <clears throat> yeah uh ladies and gentlemen please please i know whatever you guys are coming across will be big for you because it's a new thing and you think oh this is new what is this guy saying oh what uh, our parents have taught us look the salat you are doing, the five daily salat you are doing is out of coverage area. 
you are a mushrik when you do that, those salats. It's not from God. It's from Sahih Bukhari, those five prayers, the negotiated ones. In your salat, whatever you are doing is shirk. You are not even calling on the real God. Whatever you are doing is the God of Sahih Bukhari. You are worshipping the Prophet in your salat. When you are ending your salat, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi salam, you said you are saying salam to the angels. Did God ask you to come and see the rubbish to angels? You understand? You are fooling yourself for years and you go and stand in front of God, you do nothing. You tell God, uh, Rabbana kalu Rabbana inna atana saadatana wa kubara ana fadalluna sabila. Quran chapter 33 verse 67. People will lament by telling God we obeyed our leaders and our elders and they misled us from the way. I'm only here to teach you free of charge. You don't instruct me how to teach you. <laughs> you understand? You need a favor from me. I tell you what to be done. You don't come and instruct me how I should do my things. Do you see my point? So if I'm telling you this is the way I do my things, the video is there. I'm not going to repeat on my program here just because you asked me to do that. Do you see my point? My house, my rules. I have my videos there. You want to learn, it's there free of charge. You are not paying me for it. I'm not asking you to pay me. So I have done all these lectures. I have all these videos. The salat, how many types you have to do, what you have to do is there. So you go and check and learn for yourself. But when you come to my program, when I have other civilized, intelligent people who want to listen to something interesting, you are now telling me to devote my program to, for you and teach you so that I get what from it. I don't understand. Are you paying me? No. Do you see my point? So please be civilized when you are being told or given an advice. Heed to that. You need something from me. And I said, it is there. Go and check. You are saying, no, give me here. What? Uh, next caller, please, before I end, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Ibrahim Smela. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello, I'm from Ghana, Bokuapa East. You're welcome, brother. Thank you. Your name? Uh, Abdul Basit. Abdul Basit. Abdul Basit. Oh, nice to meet you, Abdul Basit. Yeah, how can I help you? How may I help mm -hmm. you? I want to ask the Hadith and the Quran, which one comes first? The Quran. The Quran itself okay. is the Quran and is the Hadith itself. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So the Quran comes first before the Sahir Bukhari or? Yes, the Quran came first oh. and way, way, way longer, longer, about 200 years over before Sahih Bukhari came. Okay, okay. It means the artist is the invented one. Exactly. They just created it. Yes, they created it. They okay. invented it. It's not from God. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, brother. Mm. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Salam. Salam. Mr. Shah, please don't be angry. Don't be angry, please. I know that I'm not a scholar. And I know that I know, I know nothing. But what I have is what I want to know. Like as you are, you are saying, you have to use only Quran. And I have already converted, and I have some some issues that you are you are saying is uh, is not compatible with what I have. So I just want you to just explain things to me. Brother, I already, I already talk, brother, but I want you to demonstrate it, brother, on your show so that I will see. Brother, yeah, I'm, listening, Mr. I'm not yeah. going to demonstrate anything on my page today. Sorry, right? Please, why? When, when are you going to demonstrate it? I have the video. Do you have? Do you do you please have common please, sense please, at all, brother? Please. Yeah, please. I sent you the link. Sure, hey, brother, I, I sent you the link. I, I, I sent you the link. Please go and check. Thank you. But 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What 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 is wrong with people? Huh? <laughs> Uh, please, a reasonable caller should just call. Yes, a two SSK. Ramadan on yesterday. Me who dear Ope. I sent you the link. I said go and check. Oh. He said, uh, uh, I said, come as but Baba, your way of assignment is not acceptable. Well, no problem. We are all entitled to our opinion. I don't, I'm not here to please people's desires. <laughs> so I, I, you don't pay me for, for what I'm doing, right? My reward comes from God. So why would I even force myself to please you? <laughs> you understand? Uh -huh. This is what people should understand. Hello, bro. Hello, uh, Baba. Eh, uh, uh, Richard, Bibi Aboko. Yeah, Bibi Aboko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's good. Yeah. Um, this this is your last caller. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know why he's he's behaving like this. Uh, did I, Baba, I don't know. Did Baba uh, tell you to convert to Islam? <laughs> Go and ask, go and ask the person, the, your madam, your chef, who told you to convert. Go and, go and ask him how to, uh, to uh, tell him to demonstrate to you. You see, one of your callers said something. He said, uh, you, you asked him about uh, some prayer. He said he, he don't know anything. I mean, he don't understand the prayer. Yeah. And you know. asked him, how is he? How is he doing it? He said, I believe in it. I don't understand, but I believe in it. I'm doing it. How can you do something that you don't understand? Exactly. You see? Exactly. And this this man, this Ramadan, this guy, uh, he know nothing about uh, Arabic. He don't know Arabic. He uh, don't know anything. But <laughs> later you you stand you no, know, he's here to argue, win your uh, win the argument. You don't know even Arabic, you don't know anything. Mm. And you are here, you want Baba to demonstrate the, the, the prayer. How can you tell him to stand up to demonstrate for you? You see, these people, I don't know what, what, what. Oh, <laughs> you, let me, let me, let me. Richard, thank you. you. In fact, you, you are, you are a threat. You are a threat to these people. Of course, this I am. Italian, you are, you are a threat to them. I, of you course, I am. You are a very big threat to them. A big one. One guy is on the, on the line, uh, uh, fragrance. Very hypocrite. He cannot oh, call. Don't mind him. He doesn't know he anything. Call. He don't mind him. He doesn't know Baba, anything. Please, please. This is this is my humble request to you. Mm. Just find one day. Just come on your platform. Open the phone. Line. Don't do any. Uh... I will do that. I will do that, uh, Richard. May I will do that. Okay. Mm hmm. So uh, I have to pick the last caller before I end. Uh, ah, this guy, Muhammad Mutawakkil, why are you wasting space on my wall? Why can't you call? Are you scared? Huh? Call. If you are a man, just call me and embarrass yourself. Yeah, Muhammad Kalbi says common sense is not common. E exactly. Their yeah, common sense is not common at all. Hello. 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 Man, get a good network and come back. Uh, Ramadan, please stop calling me. Stop calling or I'll block your number. You are not making sense anymore. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, this is that for today's program. Two hours, 30 minutes is too much. So 
Uh, I have to end now. Let me see. Let me put this one caller to, to see how he will make a mockery of himself. Hello? Yeah. Salam. Wa alaikum salam. I was looking to some side. There is no shoe here. All right, all right, anyway. So I wanted to find out how can I use the Quran to bury my dead person? If a Muslim man is dead or a woman is dead, mm. how can I use only the Quran? How does the Quran instruct us to bury our dead? Uh, brother, <clears throat> have you done with your question? If you are done, let me know, then I can drop you. Is that all yes, your question? I'm done with my question. Thank you. Let me answer your question now. Yeah. Now, what people fail to realize is before the Quran, people die and people were buried. Before the Torah and the gospel came, people died and people were buried. When you go to Quran chapter 5, verse 27, concerning uh, two sons of Adam, among the children of Adam, the two sons of Adam, when they had a fight and the other one killed the other, it was God who showed them by sending a bird, who showed the other uh, person how to bury his, his brother. So Quran chapter 5, verse 27 to verse uh, 31, it says, and recite the news of the two sons of Adam to them in truth when they offered an offering and it was accepted from one of them, but it was not accepted from the other. He, he the other brother, said, I will kill you. He, the, the other ones, also said, God only accepts from the pious. If you should stretch your hands at me to kill me, I will not stretch my hands at you to kill you. Indeed, I fear God, Lord of the worlds. Indeed, I intend to make you take over my sin and your sin. Then you will be among the companions of the fire. That is the penalty of the transgressors. And his soul subjected him to kill his brother. So he killed him and became one of the losers. Then God sent a crow, when we say Guraban, a crow, the black bird, to search in the ground in order to show him how to conceal the body of his brother. He said, Oh, woe to me, I have failed to be like this crow to conceal the body of my brother. So he became one of the what? Remorseful. Do you see the evidence here? So Quran chapter 5 verse 27 to verse 31 clearly shows any person of intellect that to go and bury the dead, you just need to have a befitting burial for a person and bury him. It doesn't have to be a ritualistic way of burying the dead. A person is dead. What do you need the body for? We have people who are even being cremated. But that doesn't mean on the day of judgment, God will not bring you back. Quran chapter 17, verse 49, you read downwards. It says, even if you become stones, God will bring you back on the day of judgment. So when we say burying the dead, uh, people were even being buried before the Quran was revealed. People were even being buried before the Torah and the Injil was reve were revealed, right? So I don't know what special type of burial you want the Quran to tell you. It's just like you want the Quran to tell you how to sleep with your wife. Are you, are you, is, why is the sectarian religions making people so dumb and foolish like this? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Shahad, <laughs> let me, let me highlight this. Yes, don't be surprised if someone asks you to explain according to the Quran how you are supposed to eat food. Don't be surprised. Somebody can ask this question. <laughs> you understand? Uh -huh. So people, can't you have any difficult question to ask me than asking me dumb, silly questions? Uh, the sectarians, please. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for people who think Baba is being harsh, being insulting, I'm not insulting. If you say I'm insulting, the prophet himself in the Quran, Quran chapter 39, verse 64, he called people ignorant people. Is he insulting to tell him first? He called people kafirun, disbelievers. Quran chapter 109, verse 1. Is he insulting? Tell him to. Quran chapter 41, verse 6. He called people mushirukun. Is it insulting? Tell him first that he's insulting. 
to top it all, Quran chapter 25, verse 44. Quran chapter 25, verse 44. See what God says. He says clearly, clearly, it says. He says, Am tasabu anna aktharahum yesmauna au yakilun in whom illa kel an am balhum adallu sabila. He says, Do you think that most of them, who are those, the people, uh, especially the mushriks, do you think that most of them listen or reason? When we say reason, somebody who uses logic, common sense, right? Do you think that most of them, they listen or reason? Then God says, in whom illa kel an am, they are only like livestock, God says. He says, they are only like livestock. Balhum adallu sabila, masawrin. Masawrin. In fact, they are more astray. Right? Now, you think I'm insulting? Why don't you tell the Quran is insulting people? Because he's calling people uh <laughs> they are just like livestock. People know. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I have to bring the topic to an end. Right? Uh, I need to I will organize a next program uh, some other time. The, the Bawa Abu Bakar says, this oh, man is a complete boy. psychopath. Uh, boy, yes. Papa. Just like you, the Mushriks. At least not more than you, the Mushriks. The pedophilia people who like to marry CCS audience. Hmm? I'm not like you. The prophet of the Quran is exonerated from that garbage and rubbish you people attribute to him. Only a fool will accept those man-made uh, garbages to the to the honorable prophet like him right if you claim you are knowledgeable man enough i'm available call me let's arrange a live dialogue you see how i embarrass you wallahi i'll embarrass all your scholars wallahi you can't face me you the mushriks this is my number here call me you are letting your ignorant uh, people call me ask stupid questions <laughs> and you say i'm abusive if you don't stop circulating those rubbish about your prophet, claiming your prophet marries his old girl, sleep with, kill people, and do all that nasty stuff, you see the correctional officer is here to stay. You see what I will do to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I bring the topic to an end. Thank you, very much. Sister Al Bashir. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I appreciate the time and all. First, Subhanahu Rabbi Zatam Maisefun wa Salaamu Ala Nuru Salaam Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you very much. Muhammad Mutawakil, are you scared to call? Shame on you. Oh, shame. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>